Overshadowed by the fight over collective bargaining, Ohio nursing home operators have quietly seethed about proposed state budget cuts. They are no longer quiet. Governor Kasich wants to cut funding for skilled nursing care by nearly half a billion dollars. This is really simple. Cut funding to our most vulnerable, and you are cutting care. You're cutting doctors, you're cutting nurses, you're cutting aides, and you're cutting vital equipment. Call your state senator and tell him to vote no on the Kasich cuts before it's too late. Call 877-917-CARE. Governor Kasich blasted the ad. He called it scare tactics and pointed out that only five other states spend more on nursing home care than Ohio does. Kathy Kandiski, yesterday afternoon, the nursing home operators said that they would stop airing the ads for now. Is this a detente? I think so. I think that uh, they got called from the calls from the Senate, Senate lawmakers saying, you know, we're getting a lot of calls on this. If you really want to negotiate with us and, you know, see some of this, this, these funds come back into the budget, you need to back off. You need to, you know, these are pretty harsh tactics. And I think that's what they did. But I fully expect those ads or similar ads to go back up if there's not some serious negotiations on that front. What do you think? Is it, is it all over with or... Uh can they come back with some facsimile of those ads? Um, I think that it's not over with if they continue to make these cuts. And, and quite frankly, I'm surprised they pulled it. And I'm also surprised that other entities that are getting hurt very much in this budget haven't taken similar tactics. Um, I think that the governor's, you know, get on the bus or run over you kind of mantra um, has frozen people. And I think they were the only ones with the guts to actually take that on. And in the end, they backed down from it because they were afraid of the bus. Um, and I don't think it's a real natural thing. Uh, you got to keep in mind also there are three different nursing home groups, lobbying groups that you know represent nursing homes in, in this state and that ad is just from one in particular and so I think they also got some pressure from some of the, the two other lobbying groups who are trying to sit down with these state senators and the administration to, to talk this this through and they don't know who, who they can trust at that point. You know they're, they're thinking that maybe they're responsible also. Um, clearly the ad says it's the Ohio Healthcare Association but that does not mean right off the bat that the other organizations weren't involved as well. And so I think that was part of why they pulled it back so that they can kind of open up that line of communication again because I think it pretty much came to a stop this week once those ads um, really started permeating throughout the state. All right, I think you need to be realistic. Um, uh, now deceased but 40-year veteran of the Ohio House, Bob Nestle, once told me that um, the General Assembly only changes 4% of the governor's as introduced budget by the time it goes through a conference committee and everything. The governor has multiple departments, hundreds of staff devoted to this. General Assembly members are by and large part-time limited staff. And uh, the other thing is the governor is right in doing this because uh, and a lot of people say, well, the nursing homes will win because, you know, the campaign money. The campaign money is a means to the end. The end is winning the election. And right now the Tea Party runs the GOP primaries a lot more than nursing home money will run. So the Tea Party is adamantly against the tax increase. The only way you can do this and give them more money is to either cut elsewhere or to raise taxes. And that's well, I, not think, I think what they're banking on is revenue estimates coming in to show that there's a little more money for the lawmakers in the budget. And I think they want to be first in line for any additional funds that may become available. And I think that the, the signals they were getting in the House was, we, we want to give you more money, but we need to know if more money is going to be available. So I think that's what they're hoping for. I, I think there might be a third, a third option. Uh, option under your, yeah. And I would, the only thing I'd say is that with the increase of gasoline prices, I would, I would moderate all Expect expectations for increases of revenue. You know, one last really interesting thing about this budget is the governor, is rightly so, has said that you know nursing homes were taking up too much of it, and that home care should be a better emphasis. But if you actually look at the budget, home care for seniors is cut too, um, and so um, you know it's kind of a contradiction in his public policy that's been lost in this whole debate. Well, the other interesting aspect to it is is that the governor's talking about two things. The, the cuts to the nursing homes is cuts, are cuts in the rates they are paid to care for Medicaid patients. The other thing the governor's trying to do is shift more Medicaid patients onto home care. The nursing homes aren't opposing that. They're just opposing what they're paid to care for the people that come to their homes. So th there's a little, uh, it's kind of an interesting argument. They are, I mean, everybody's getting rate cuts. That's how they're saving money in Medicaid. Mm -hmm.